the FIFA World Cup is live on Sky Sports. Oh, See every game of football's ultimate showcase. Glorious! You need to subscribe to Sky's title and Sky Sport to watch this premium content. For details, see sky.co.nz. Welcome to Football Fever with Jason Pine. I swear you'll never see anything like this ever again. Powered by Newstalk ZB and Sky Sport, the home of the FIFA World Cup. All 64 matches live. Welcome into Football Fever in association with Sky Sport. All 64 matches live across the tournament. Jason Pine and David Choke with you. Underway, one game down, 63 to go. Qatar have become the first host nation to lose a World Cup football opener after a 2-0 defeat to Ecuador on Sky Sport. And Qatar's defence have been opened up again here. Referee has a look. Referee points to the penalty spot. And uh, Valencia for Ecuador. It's 1-0. This time, the goal will count, and Ecuador can celebrate. Caicedo back into Preciado, decent looking ball, it's two. Same player, twice the advantage. 2-0, Ecuador. Goals from Ena Valencia, penalty spot in the 16th minute, great header in the 31st. Ecuador also had a goal ruled out by the VAR in the third minute. David Choate, we both watched this one this morning. What did you make of Qatar, first of all? Oh, they were ordinary, Piney. I thought, um, did they not show up or is that what they've got? That's what I can't work out. I can't work out if they really froze on the day because uh, first half particularly, nothing doing. Second half, marginally better, but in a game that was uh, already gone, I think. So uh, a forgettable f- performance would be how I'd uh, categorise it. Ecuador were good though, weren't they? I mean, they did what they had to do. They're used to playing Brazil, Argentina, teams like that. They, um, they should get out of this group OK with the Netherlands, shouldn't they? You would think so. Um, I thought uh, they looked sharp going forward, untested probably at the back, so let's see what that looks like. But in, in, in theory, uh, they are a side that could get out of this group with, without too many problems. Senegal will be their challenge. Uh, but in Enor Valencia, they've clearly got a striker and a leader. Um, not often you see leading from the front, um, but yeah, captain and scorer should have had a hat-trick. What an offside decision. What did you make of it? <laughs> it was so weird. When it was called offside, I-, I couldn't understand what was going on. When they slow it down and they bring in the technology, you can see what the story is. Because the keepers come out to get the get the cross, he ceases to become the last man. There's only one defender behind him. And then when they, they microscope it down, I think his calf is offside. Is that how you read it? Yeah, fantastic. It took it took me multiple um, replays to try and work it out and, and probably technically correct. Um, but, uh, gee, pre-VAR and pre-technology, it would never have been called. And it was quite quite a fascinating goal. It was actually a good goal in the end, but uh, ruled out. But Valencia, top of the striking list uh, with two goals. He's, he's underway. He's underway in the golden boot race. All right, so Qatar... We don't expect to get out of the group. Ecuador, we think, might, and it might come down to their game against Senegal, who are in action uh, on day two. We'll get to their game in a minute, but I want to talk about the first game tomorrow morning our time, 2 a.m. Get the alarm set for this. England v Iran in Group B. England, of course, were fourth last time out after losing that semi-final to Croatia. Iran, five appearances at World Cups. They've never got out of the group. What do you expect from England? First up, Jody. Well, there's been a, an air of pessimism about England, hasn't there? Their Nation League's form has caused them a little bit of concern. I think there is some doubt at the back, even even how they're going to play. Are they going to play a three? Are they going to play uh, a four? Um, Harry Maguire will come back in for sure, I think, um, which will be uh, good for all those Man United fans. I think they're loving to hate Harry at the moment. But what do you expect from England? I expect this one to be tight, actually, because I don't see England coming out and battering sides. I think to win. Um, Iran are, what, ranked 20 in the world against ranked 5 in the world. You'd have to think that England go in hot favourites. But I don't see a free scoring affair. That's what I don't expect. Yeah, there are tougher games ahead, I think, for England, certainly in this tournament. But they, they will uh, back themselves to comfortably account for Iran. In attack, we know Harry Kane's going to lead the line. There's talk that Phil Foden and Bukayo Sako will be alongside. So that leaves Raheem Sterling on the bench to start. Do you think that's the way he'll do it? He hasn't, I mean, you're a Chelsea man. Yeah. How's, how's Sterling been for Chelsea? Yeah, I think Sterling has been uh, ordinary. Um, A little confused, a little out of sorts. So I think if you're looking at form players, 
um, who's going to partner Harry Kane or who's going to support Harry Kane because they'll play Kane up top and then it'll be the likes of, um, you say, Foden, Mount, Sterling um, and Saka. Mm. I think Saka's the wild card. Yeah. I think he should start. I think Saka should start. He's been in uh, in that side that's playing beautiful football, that Arsenal side. I only often hear me say that, Piney, but Arsenal, <laughs> top of the league and doing it well and Saka's at the heart of that. So uh, for me, Saka starts... He's a wild card. He can um, he can create and score. So, yeah, I think going up top, uh, Kane gets goals. The rest of them can chip in, but it'll be interesting to see what Southgate goes with. Football fever, thanks to Sky Sport, the home of the FIFA World Cup. All 64 matches live. 2am tomorrow morning, England-Iran, Group B's opener. Then it's the uh, Senegalese-Netherlands clash. Uh, the Netherlands weren't there in 2018, of course, but third in 2014 and runners-up in 2010. The Dutch will be amped for this one. Senegal, their third appearance at a World Cup, made the quarterfinals in 2002 and uh, only uh, group play last time out in Russia. The, the Netherlands, the Dutch, they're always so interesting, aren't they? Um, what do you expect from them and their World Cup opener? Well, I think this one's uh, fascinating. Disappointing for Senegal with Mane out. Mane was their, their go-to guy. And then if you go beyond Mane, you're looking like Ismaili Saar, the Watford striker, or, or uh, forgive my pronunciation, DDU or uh, uh, the, out of Turkey. I think um, they're the next two sort of frontline players for them. But run through that Dutch side, Van Dijk, De Litt, Cody Gapko. He's a new name that'll be worth watching. Memphis to pay, Frankie Dijon. They have quality throughout, so I think they go in heavily favoured. I think they win, and I think they win comfortably. Do you fear for Qatar when they play the Netherlands? Yeah, depending on what's going on in the group, <laughs> um, the Netherlands could take to Qatar. Um, and I think that was the interesting thing back reverting to this morning's match. Two goals is two goals positive in goal difference. This group could come down to goal difference uh, for that second spot for mine. So it'll be interesting to see what happens when uh, the Netherlands, if they catch fire, they'll slaughter them. That's why I thought that was odd that, and we don't want to revert back to this game for too long, but that, that Ecuador didn't put the foot down in the second half. They almost looked like they were happy with 2-0. Yeah, I, I did feel like it was a buttoning off uh, as opposed to an improvement by Qatar. So I think... They may live to regret that. That could be their biggest regret because this goal difference uh, could become critical in this group or in any group, in fact, uh, because you only get three matches to get yourself sorted and uh, a draw here and there creates a havoc. Yeah, Senegal and uh, and the uh, Ecuador game, Senegal Ecuador game in Group A will be fascinating. We expect Netherlands to be okay in Qatar. Look, I don't think we'll see them beyond uh, Group Play. Jason Pine. Jason Pine. Eight o'clock tomorrow morning. Probably the tightest of the three matches on day two from Group B. The United States, who weren't there in 2018, but at the seven World Cups before that, up against Wales, who haven't been there since 1958. That is an awfully long time for Welsh fans to wait. I checked the TAB odds on this. USA 237, Wales 330. That's not bad money on Wales. Yeah, it is. It's, it's tight, um, and, and it can be a tight affair. But as you say, they don't. Uh, they've waited a long time between drinks. Uh, the fifties to now, you can't really draw any comparisons. I think uh, this this has draw written all over it for mine. I think two sides that the goals don't flow for. But conversely, I think for the states, they've been quite tight defensively. Pulisic up front for the States. That gives them sort of the attacking big name, but he'll have to catch fire. He's got a good record, though. 52 caps, 21 goals. Mm. It's not bad at international level, so he carries the weight of the States on his shoulders. And for the uh, the Welsh, what do you got? Bale and Ramsey, 33 and 31, respectively. They should be in the sort of uh, prime of their form, if, if not coming off the back of it, and they look on the downward trend for mine. Um, it's going to be a, a, a tough one. They've only kept one clean sheet in 11, have the Welsh. Um, so uh, I think this will be a very tight affair. In terms of Wales, you think back, 1958, as I say, awfully long time ago, you think of the Welsh players then who haven't played at World Cups, Ryan Giggs, Mark Hughes, Neville Southall, Kevin Ratcliffe, players like that, a whole two or three generations of Welsh players who have never been on this stage. Yeah, unbelievable, and, and, and their famous son at the moment, Gareth Bale at 33, now playing in the States, gets a chance to play at a World Cup and uh, strut his stuff on the world stage. Yeah, a fascinating, a fascinating affair. The Welsh... They're on the up. They're, 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 they're confident. There's something about the Welsh side that's got a good feel about them. So uh, this match presents uh, a real challenge. 
Really tight, real tough one to pick. Yeah, it is indeed. Uh, so England, I run 2am on Sky Sport, then Senegal, Netherlands, 5am, and the USA against Wales at 8am. That is your day two action on Sky Sport. We'll wrap all those games for you on the pod tomorrow and look ahead to a jam-packed day three, which contains four matches. So plenty of football to come on Football Fever. Get some coffee and Chody. We'll see you tomorrow. Happy to be luxuriating in football, Piney. The FIFA World Cup is live on Sky Sports. Oh, See every game of football's ultimate showcase. Glorious! You need to subscribe to Sky's title and Sky Sport to watch this premium content. For details, see sky.co.nz.